Makers, I'm Nick. The last few times we covered eGPUs, a lot of people didn't understand that the performance of them just isn't going to be anywhere near the desktop versions of the cards. And no matter how you connect them, if you connect them to a laptop or a desktop system, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. And I was really curious to see if we could get a bit more performance if you actually used a higher end GPU. So with that in mind, Gigabyte sent over their brand new liquid cooled RTX 2080 Ti gaming box designed to connect to your laptop or your desktop via Thunderbolt 3. So let's try and keep this as short as sweet as possible and yeah, see if it's worth your hard earned money. really love the idea of eGPUs and their ability to breathe some new life into an older laptop. Except that uh, I don't have a laptop that the 2080 Ti Aorus gaming box will actually work with. It just flat out refused to work with my Dell XPS 9550, so I had to get a little bit creative. So I decided that instead of not doing a video about the Aorus gaming box at all, that I would use a desktop motherboard that has Thunderbolt instead. So I ended up connecting the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box to the ASRock X570 ITX TB3 Phantom Gaming with the Ryzen 7 3700X and 32 gigs of Corsair LPS at 3200 megahertz and this is the only desktop board that I've got at the moment that has Thunderbolt 3 and it's like the only device that I've got that actually supports it as well so I didn't really have a choice this is just how I had to do it so yeah let's uh before we do all of that let's crack it open and uh see what makes the gaming box tick let's see what what's underneath and what's inside this thing let's take a bit of a look I don't usually like doing this stuff but I'm Doing this out of my own curiosity. I want to see what makes this puppy tick. Let's have a look. All right. Oh, okay. Well, first things first, the radiator looks like it's at the top, which is quite cool. If I flip it over, you can hear the, the fluid moving around and it's got dust filters on the sides. I'll pull these out because probably not going to need the dust filters to be inside this. Let's pull both of them out. Okay, let's crack her open. There's a 450 watt power supply in the bottom that supplies power to the 2080 Ti up the top. It's got two eight pin power connectors. It's got this little side venting fan and it has a 240 millimeter AIO with a custom made water block and heat pipe setup that covers all of the MOSFETs and the VRM and the memory on the card itself. So it's actually quite a nice elegantly packaged design. Usually with these GPUs, the GPU will actually be vertically mounted, but in this case, it's actually horizontally mounted. And you can actually tell by the IO on the back of the whole thing itself. I didn't want to take any of the bracing off because it's part of the whole structure of the external GPU. And I just feel like I would have spent way too much time. But as you can see on the back side, if we flip it over, it uses a board that obviously has all of the logic for all of the additional things. So this would have the controller for the Thunderbolt, Ethernet, the additional as media USB controller that's on this as well. And by the looks of it, the power supply plugs into this board as well. So yeah, that's basically it. I didn't want to do too much uh, in depth with this, but I did just want to see what was inside. And before I forget to mention as well, these fans are set up in an exhaust configuration. So it pulls the air in from the sides and it exhausts everything out of the top, which you can see right here. And that's obviously the 240 mil rad up the top. What we're going to do now is see how the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box performs against a stack of other GPUs and see if the performance is anywhere near any of its desktop counterparts. Spoiler alert, uh, as you're probably expecting, it's nowhere near a regular old RTX 2080 Ti in performance, but yeah, let's check out the numbers first and then chat about the 2080 Ti gaming box after that.
From all of those results, you can see that the Aorus 2080 Ti gaming box has decent performance, but as expected, it's nowhere near its desktop counterpart. Even with overclocking it, there was little to no gain at all. And, and like with the last few eGPU videos we've done, the bottleneck is always going to be Thunderbolt itself. Thermally, I think it's about what you'd expect from an eGPU, and yeah, I'll have to give that to Gigabyte. The card does run at a pretty acceptable temperature. However, Gigabyte claims that the 2080 Ti gaming box is quiet. Well, it's not. Uh, yeah, let's have a listen so you can hear it for yourself. idle it's fine but the second you start doing something the fans ramp up and it can get pretty loud pretty quickly and to be honest though uh not to knock gigabyte i think the thermals are good but saying that it's quiet isn't super accurate but yeah uh, it might not even matter to you and it doesn't really matter to me either because when i'm using stuff like this i'm using headphones so i wouldn't hear it anyways for content creation on a laptop with the 2080 ti gaming box attached in premiere pro uh, you'll get better timeline performance. There's no way you could deny that at all. The, your render times will most likely be the same, but again, I didn't have a laptop to test this with, so from past experience and using eGPUs with other laptops in the past, this has always been the case. And because it's 2020, the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box also has RGB, and you can control that in RGB Fusion. However, I don't think the RGB is that important, but it does actually serve a second purpose. When the RGB comes on, it means the gaming box has been detected and it's actually working. Now, I did have a few BIOS issues with the ASRock motherboard itself at first, and after sorting all that out, the RGB lit up and I was good to go. Well then, this begs the question, ladies and gents, who is this designed for? Um, I, I think it's for someone who's got a laptop who docks it when they get home to game and they have an external monitor plugged in because if you wanted to use it with your laptop's display, you'd still be limiting yourself by Thunderbolt severely. I think it's for content creators who don't have the space for a full desktop PC and still want it to remain as portable as possible, although forget about it working on a Mac, but that's a story for a whole nother video. The reason why I, I say it's for people who want to use it for docking their laptops is because even though it comes with a carry bag, it weighs around four kilos or around nine pounds. And that's uh, pretty heavy for something that's supposed to be portable. That or I'm just really weak. <laughs> I mean, it's me being honest. Anyway, don't get me wrong. I do like the Aorus 2080 Ti gaming box and I think it has its place in the market. It's got a few features that make it more attractive than the older 2070 gaming box. It's got some nice features that someone who would use it as a docking station would probably consider and they would probably use. It's got an internal USB hub so you can connect up your mouse and keyboard directly to the back of it, which I think is really nice. It's got ethernet, which is pretty nice considering almost all modern laptops have removed ethernet. So you actually get it back this way. And and yeah, I've, I personally found the Ethernet to be one of the most useful features with the gaming box. And I think that at the end of the day, it, like I said before, it really does have its place in the market. And there are people that will buy this for the use case, but I'm not sure who those people are because I think that the price tag that it's at, it will probably deter most people. The liquid cooling is cool and I think it's a little bit of a flex from Gigabyte and I think it does make it a bit quieter, but by how much, I think that's hard to say. So let's talk about the price. The Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box is going for around 1500 US dollars or around 2500 Australian dollars at the time of making this video. That's a few hundred dollars more than the desktop card. And is it worth it though? I'll leave that up to you to decide because I've got no idea who's actually going to buy this. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button or supporting us on Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And again, 
I think people will buy this. I'm not sure who would spend this kind of money, but there is a market for it. And I think it's really aimed more than it being a gaming box for gamers. It's for content creators who don't have space for those big desktop systems. I don't know. That's my opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.